so far we arrived <clears throat> so the moment everybody has got the text we'll start reading and today Chana ji can start if she has the text 527 so far we arrive by considering mind and memory mainly in regard to the primary phenomena of mental self consciousness in time but if we consider them with regard to self experience as well as self consciousness and other experience as well as self experience we shall find that we arrive at the same result with richer contents and a still clearer light on the nature of the at present let us thus express what we have seen an eternal conscious being who supports the mobile action of mind on a stable immobile self consciousness free from the action of time and who while with a knowledge superior to mind he embraces all the movement of time wells by the action of mind in that move as the surface mental entity <clears throat> moving from moment to moment not observing his essential self but only his relation to his experiences of the time movement in that movement keeping the future of himself in what appears to be a blank of ignorance and non existence but is an unrealized fullness grasping knowledge and experience of being in the present putting it away in the past which again appears to be a blank of ignorance and non existence partly lighted partly saved and stored up by memory he puts on the aspect of a thing fleeting and uncertain ceasing without stability upon things fleeting and uncertain but in reality we shall find he is always the same eternal who is forever stable and self possessed in his supramental knowledge and what he seizes on is also forever stable and eternal for it is himself that he is mentally experiencing in the succession of time yeah so the very interesting para where he is saying that the nature of we have seen very clearly that the nature of uh, the reality goes on changing when you go from one level of consciousness to another level it goes on changing same thing with memory memory also takes on totally a different character so in the physical world our memory is what we remember of the past okay and that also very imperfectly sometimes we can remember sometimes we can't remember and there is even a certain amount of distortion in our remembering <clears throat> because we make mistakes in what we have remembered okay so this is what he is saying we are experiencing but there is another aspect of memory is it only memory of events in the physical world he is saying that there is an experience of a self experience in other words the emotions that you had the anger that you had at a particular time you remember so that is different from the <clears throat> memory of events in the physical world so that is a memory of self experience and same basing also other experience so other experience can be there can be three types of memory memory of your own emotional condition yesterday i was angry yesterday i was uh very well disposed to everybody this is self experience memory but there is also event yesterday there is a quarrel in so and so yesterday there was a beautiful music program this is other experience in the physical world okay outside you so then there is another experience at the <coughs> in the uh, that which is in the physical world which is no relation to you okay as i said yesterday modi gave a speech it is nothing to do with you so there also there is a different type of memory memory within yourself of your emotions memory of events connected with you and memory of events not connected with you three types of memories then there is a fourth type that is when you go from the physical level 1 to level 2 the experience that you have within yourself there is a memory of that also so this is what he is discussing and we'll see what he is saying in uh, in detail so memory also goes on changing its characteristic and <clears throat> then we also remember uh, we'll come to that so he remember the chapter 
he has told us that every level of consciousness you start seeing reality in a different way so what is it what is the nature of consciousness how is it that it goes on changing so he is examining consciousness and the first thing that he is examining in consciousness is memory but later on he will see other aspects of mem- of consciousness also so <clears throat> consciousness is one aspect of memory uh, of uh, uh, sorry memory is one aspect of consciousness then there is another aspect imagination it's another aspect of consciousness so one by one he will examine all these things to determine the nature of consciousness okay so this is what he is doing in the chapter now we are dealing with memory <laughs> that's a chapter i am reading each sentence <clears throat> so far we arrive by considering mind and memory mainly in regard to the primary phenomenon of mental self consciousness in time so when he is saying in time it's very clearly in the physical world okay because the ex- spiritual experience of the self is outside time so when he says in time and primary phenomenon of mental self consciousness because there can be a self consciousness which is not mental it can be spiritual self consciousness so very clearly the sentence three words which tell you at which point he is locating himself primary phenomenon very very primary very very fundamental very very first okay in the physical world mental self consciousness again the normal mind and third one in time so that's what he is discussing our normal memory <clears throat> but if we consider them with regard to self experience as well as self consciousness and other experience as well as self experience we shall find that we arrive at the same result with richer contents and a still clearer light on the nature of ignorance so what he is saying is at the physical level memory has got this characteristic okay. but if you consider them from the uh, regard of self experience so self experience also can be of two types it can be in the physical world as i said your anger your uh, love your good will towards others okay a mood of depression these are all self experience in the physical world but there can be a self experience at a higher level spiritual experience so when he is talking of that as well as self consciousness you what is self consciousness self consciousness is realizing who you really are okay our normal condition of self consciousness is not we are focused on the ego so that is not the self consciousness that he is talking about he is talking of the self consciousness which is available when you are outside your body mind life in the second level of spiritual planes that is a self consciousness and so <clears throat> self experience as well as self consciousness and other experience other experience also other people's experiences also you can remember not your own okay as well as self experience okay other experience as well as self experience we shall find that we arrive at the same result with richer contents and a still clearer light on the nature of ignorance so what is he saying richer contents in other words your memory in the physical world is very short okay sometimes you don't even remember what happened yesterday okay sometimes and if 10 years ago your memory is even more faint sometimes it is faint sometimes it disappears completely okay so memory is a function of the mind mental the normal mind normal mind of man so this is a function but when you go to the spiritual planes of consciousness the memory goes far deeper into the past so far that you can even remember what you were in your past life okay that's what is meaning by richer contents okay it becomes and also much clearer you remember what happened in your past life and to a certain extent you can even get memory of the future that also is written uh, is uh, revealed to you so that's what i mean by richer contents the memory becomes much more powerful and extends itself into the past as well as into the future okay so it's far far richer than at the level 1 level 1 memory is 
okay it does help us because if we don't remember what happened yesterday then today we will not be able to follow up what we experienced yesterday so now he is saying at a higher level it's far far richer okay and a still clearer light on the nature of ignorance so very interesting na huh? so you can see what he is saying i hope it is clear <coughs> at present let us thus express what we have seen let us summarize what he is saying at present let us thus express what we have seen what we have analyzed an eternal conscious being who supports the mobile action of mind on a stable immobile self consciousness free from the action of time and who while with a knowledge superior to mind he embraces all the movement of time dwells in the action of mind in that movement let's see what he is saying it is very clear that he is talking of when you go to the higher mind level or even a slightly higher also higher mind eleven mind intuitive mind so what do you let us express what we have seen uh, an analysis an eternal conscious being who is that obviously the self okay because he is eternal and is fully conscious but he is a being is an individual the jivatman okay <clears throat> the eternal conscious being the jivatman in spiritual field of consciousness who supports the mobile action of mind on a stable immobile self consciousness in other words you are yourself in a completely static condition absolute silence but the your silence is supporting all the movement in the physical world okay this way he is putting in different word but i'll remind you again to see it in a different way if there is no water behind the dam which is absolutely calm quiet without motion there can be no river the river is a movement and the river cannot exist unless there is a stability behind so individually when you experience this you find yourself to be absolutely calm and quiet and the first experience is that you have no connection with the physical world in other words the water behind the dam has no connection with the river below okay that's the first experience and that's why you see the physical world is unreal but in the second one you can remember that oh there is a connection and i myself my body mind life in the physical world is not something absolutely alien and stranger to me it was after all at one time i was lost in that body mind life so there is a connection and you see the connection and you see that your stable consciousness is supporting the consciousness mobile in time mobile your body your mind and your life is mobile there is constant movement of the body there is constant movement of the vital and there is constant movement of the mind when these movements in the mind life body sees you are in the self you are in the level of level 2 so that's what he saying okay very clear see when an eternal self conscious being that's the self who supports the mobile action of mind but it is doing so from a stable immobile self consciousness free from the action of time you are not in time and you are supporting the action in time and who while with a knowledge superior to mind he embraces all the movement of time dwells by the action of mind in that movement so he can even although he is himself in the absolutely in the <clears throat> stable consciousness he supports he can do something to the body mind life in the at level 1 remember that in the second level of the spiritual planes of consciousness some amount of connection you can find <clears throat> not full but some amount you can find and you can even have a few changes from there you can have effects on your body you can have effect on your vital and you can definitely have effect on your mind you can purify your mind from there you can also purify your vital but first experience no good mostly nobody is interested in purifying 
they are so content with their stable consciousness of the soul that they are very satisfied with that. The Swamdha state is constantly, he is referring back to the physical world. Okay. So he is talking only of his own experience. Okay. Clear. Action in time. So you are your soul, your Jivatman has gone into a stable consciousness, but you see a connection with the lower. Again, we see that connection in the Gita. Okay. You are first the Sakshi, unconnected. Then you become the Jyata, you become the knower, a small connection comes. Then you become the Bharta. So Bharta means you are supporting. That's what Sridhar is saying here. So the Bharta, all in the Gita, is falling. And so you are the supporter. Then you start not only supporting, but enjoying Bhokta. And finally, you become the Jyata, you understand. Sridhar is saying, you understand the nature of ignorance. So you become the knower. What is the nature of ignorance you understand? Finally, you become the Ishwar. So when he is talking of these experiences, he is including the spiritual and the supermental. From there, this is possible. Okay. In the lower, partially possible. At the lower, absolutely possible. As the surface mental entity moving from moment to moment, not observing his essential self, but only his relation to his experiences of the time movement, in that movement, keeping the future from himself in what appears to be a blank of ignorance and non-existence, but is an unrealized fullness, grasping knowledge and experience of being in the present, putting it away in the past, which again appears to be a blank of ignorance and non-existence, partly lighted, partly saved, and stored up by memory, he puts on the aspect of a thing, fleeting and uncertain, seizing without stability upon things, fleeting and uncertain. This huge sentence, he is describing our normal memory in the physical world. So let's look at that, and you will see, how. first of all he's saying, as a surface mental entity. Very clearly, he is talking of the level one, when we are ignorant and we are using our normal mind, okay, not the spiritual mind. This As the surface mental entity, so he is talking of the Manomaya Purusha, the surface mental entity, moving from moment to moment. We are in time, identified with our body-mind life, okay. Movement, Moving from moment to moment, not in the stable. When you are in the stable, you are not moving from moment to moment. Moving from moment to moment necessarily means level one, our normal life. Not observing his essential self. That means you are not conscious of yourself. Obviously, all of us are not conscious of ourselves. But only his relation to the experiences of the time movement. So, whatever is happening in the world, time movement, you remember. What has happened one minute ago, one hour ago, 24 hours ago, what happened yesterday, day before yesterday, you are having a relation with that, okay? <clears throat> relation in the sense of memory. In that movement, keeping the future from himself, we don't know. When he's saying, in that movement, keeping the future from himself means you don't know the future. Keeping it from yourself. In what appears to be a blank of ignorance. We don't know what the future holds for us. That's why everybody rushes to astrologers and soothsayers and, and crystal gazers. <laughs> you know that, no? In the West, they, they go to crystal gazers to look at the and tell you your future. <laughs> if you go to the Pondicherry, you will see near the beach, there are soothsayers <laughs> who sit with a parrot <laughs> and there are ignorant people who go and ask them what is going to happen to me tomorrow and then the parrot comes out and picks a card <laughs> it's so funny so the desire to know the future is there but it differs from from absolutely parrot picking the cards random absolutely ignorance and superstitious but then when you look at the, um, you go to soothsayers, 
Okay, you go to, if you look and see the future, then it's much more real. But there also, there's a huge difference between the avatar who can see fully the future and tell you clearly, even 100 years afterwards, what's going to happen. So does forecast the <laughs> India becoming free, India, uh, the partition disappearing, all these things he has mentioned 75 years ago. Okay, so that's what Sir is saying. <clears throat> Now look at the sentence. As a surface mental entity, very clear. He's talking about the mind. And moving from moment to moment in time, not observing his essential self, completely ignorant of our real being, but only his relation to your experiences in time movement. All the events, all your own emotional states, you remember in time. In that movement, in the physical world, keeping the future from himself, he doesn't know the future. In what appears to be a blank of ignorance. We are totally ignorant about our future. And non-existence. We don't even know whether it will exist. But is an unrealized fullness. It is, you are in the lower level and you are not seeing. But really, there is a fullness in the future. And that future can be very, very fast and very, very distant for different individuals. But is an unrealized fullness. Fullness, not the word fullness. He is using the word fullness in the sense of ripeness, in the sense of fulfillment. Okay? Your destiny will be fulfilled. Unrealized fullness. Grasping. That's why Mother used to always say to everybody, keep trying and your future destiny is 100% sure. But she is not telling you what time it will be. Okay. In fact, even she herself did not know what the result of her work will be. She says it is not being revealed to me. But the memory is sure. In the, uh, in the, uh, the record of yoga, Sam also says that I have full faith in my ultimate destiny. It's a very interesting thing what he says. He says I have full faith in my destiny. But I don't know when it will realize itself. There is a little doubt about the time factor. He says that. <laughs> That's not always revealed to you. Because suppose it is revealed to you that this will happen, then you will stop making an effort. <laughs> but if you don't know, your effort will be on. <laughs> okay. Is an unrealized fullness. Everybody's spiritual destiny is 100% sure. Grasping knowledge and experience of being in the present our normal condition, putting it away in the past. Our memory, putting it away in the past is a memory, which again appears to be a blank of ignorance, okay? <clears throat> because it's not real anymore to you. And non-existence, the past is partly lighted, partly saved and stored up by memory. Partly lighted because you don't remember accurately what your friend told you yesterday, what happened, because everybody is seeing in a different way. Na? So partly lighted and partly saved. Everything that happened to you yesterday, you don't remember. You are saving it partly. The important things you remember, what is important to you. And it is stored up in the memory. He puts on, who is a he? Manomaya Purusha. He has said, serve as mental entity. That's why he is using the word he. Okay, So he is the soul. But the soul in body-mind life, okay? he puts on the aspect of a thing, fleeting and uncertain, seizing without stability upon things fleeting and uncertain. So, these without seizing, without stability upon things fleeting. Which are the things fleeting? Even in the physical world, physical things are also fleeting and uncertain. Your emotions also you are trying to get, but they run away. You, they can't always be um, um, pure feelings. They, <coughs> and also your thoughts. <coughs> Everything flees in that. The word flee is flying away. Movement, okay? Transient and uncertain. So the memory is there, but the memory is not 100% sure except in the spiritual planes of consciousness. But in reality, we shall find he is always the same eternal 
who is forever stable and self-possessed in his supramental knowledge. And what he seizes on is also forever stable and eternal. For it is himself that he is mentally experiencing in the succession of time. Now, that's a very interesting sentence and look carefully. He's saying that we are <clears throat> at the normal hour level, we are experiencing things and they seem to be fleeting and going away. But actually they don't. They are all stored fully in the higher consciousness. Part of you is there in the super mind. Part of you is there in the spiritual planes of consciousness level two. And part of it is there in the level one. So, Everything is stored at the highest levels. Nothing is fleeting. Okay? Here you feel it as fleeting, but every experience that you have is stored. Because at the end of your life, when your soul gets rid of the body-mind life, then there is a review. This is very interesting. If you look at all the reincarnation cases, okay, and <clears throat> what's called near-death experience, there is a review of one's life. Okay? It's like a fast forward or a fast backward movement and you review your things and you see where you have gone wrong and what has to be done. And then you benefit from that and take birth again. So this is what he's saying. Everything is recorded. Nothing is unrecorded. Even those things which are fleeting, everything is recorded where? Sometimes in the subconscious, but very often also in the intraconscious. Your subliminal self, everything is there. That is the reason why when you are hypnotized, okay, the hypnotizer can take you into the past and make you relive that moment because it has not disappeared. It is not fleeting there. It is permanently recorded in the, in the spiritual planes of consciousness. Okay? So, very interesting what he's saying. But at that level, in the higher levels, you can seize with stability. You can see what will happen. But in the physical world, you seize without stability and things move away and you can't even remember always very well. But in reality, we shall find he is always the same eternal. You are there, part of you is there at the supermental level, part of you is there at the spiritual level and part of you is there in the physical world. That's what is meant by Annamaya Purusha, Pranamaya Purusha, Manomaya Purusha, Vijjanamaya Purusha, Anandamaya Purusha. Part of you is there everywhere. Okay? And you have to realize from the door, you have to realize, oh, I am really the higher. Oh, no, I am the highest. So, this is the spiritual evolution of the individual. Okay? So, very interesting para, but we have to go behind the words to understand what you say. Okay, I hope it was clear. <laughs> now we read the next one. Time is a great bank of conscious existence. Uh, Yasmin, will you read? Yasmin, you yes, are yes, 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 yes. Okay. Then will you read the next one? Time is a great time. Time. <coughs> time is the great blank of conscious existence turned into values of experience and action. The surface mental being draws upon the past and the future also and points it continually into the present. He accounts for and stores up the gain he has gathered in what we call the past, not knowing how ever present is the past in us. He uses as much of it as he needs as a coin of knowledge and realized being and pays it out as coin of mental, vital and physical action in the commerce of the present, which creates to his view the new wealth of the future. Ignorance is a utilization of the being's self-knowledge in such a way as to make it valuable for time experience and valid for time activity. What we do not know is what we have not yet taken up, coined and used in our mental experience 
or have ceased to point or use behind all is known and all is all and all is ready for use according to the will of the self in its dealings with time and space and causal causality one might almost say that our surface being is only the deeper eternal self in us throwing itself out as the adventurer in time a gambler and speculator in infinite possibilities limiting itself to the succession of moments so that it may have all the surprise and delight of the adventure keeping back its self knowledge and complete self being so that it may win again what it seems to have lost reconquering all itself to the checkered joy and pain of an eonic passion and seeking an endeavor oh, is a vast chapter chapter and what a paragraph my god he has given you a very very interesting image to say he is giving the image of a bank and what does your bank account contain it contains all that you have experienced in the past and how is it value so you use your experience of the past to progress in the future so that's what he's saying you draw upon your bank you draw the money which is your memory of the old things and then you spend that money use that experience for new experience so you are using your past to buy the future that's basically the image that he is using is a wonderful image na no? so <clears throat> unless if i if i get an experience today and i realize oh i should not have got angry then this experience is a coin by which i can use in the future to control myself so it becomes a value so that is the money that is there in my bank memory and i use it for improving myself in other words to buy myself some peace and non angry movement <laughs> okay it is very interesting na what is using so i'm very so fond of using images because it becomes so 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 clear okay so the image of the bank is very clear everything that you experience is put away into the bank of memory it's very similar okay today i get my salary and it is put into the bank and i use that money for my present and i become i become i can progress and if i progress i will get a bigger and bigger salary <coughs> in other words i will have better and better experiences and that also goes into my bank account and i can use that again for the future so this is what you say now let's have a look at the images this is the last paragraph and we have about 10 minutes only not even 10 minutes uh, but we'll see what he say very interesting time is a great bank of conscious existence turned into values of experience and action so time is a great bank of conscious existence but actually that great bank is the the real bank is the timeless where everything is stored so time is a great bank of conscious existence turned into values of experience and action so whatever you have experienced in the past that's your bank account and you are using that experience to go further in life. so that's what it is now we go more into the image the surface mental being draws upon the past so the past is your bank and and the future also look at that when you are in the spiritual planes of consciousness even the future when you see the future it can also help you okay <clears throat> and coins it continuously in the present so what does that mean it means you are using your past experience and benefiting from it spending it and getting even more value out of what you have experienced <clears throat> he accounts for and stores up the gains he has gathered 
in what we call the past. Okay. Just one second. He accounts for and stores up the gains he has gathered in what we call the past. All the experience that he has got, he has to benefit from that. He has to profit from that. So he has gathered in what we call the past, not knowing how ever present is the past in us. Now, what does that mean? Not knowing, he doesn't know that what we have experienced in the past is determining my present. This is the causality karma. So not knowing how ever present is the past in us is the law of karma. What you have done in the past is going to limit you or help you both in the present. And what you are experiencing in the present will be used in the future. So not knowing how ever present, but when you go to the spiritual planes of consciousness, you will know why things are happening to you. Okay? Not knowing how ever present is the past in us. So it is stored. This sentence is very clear. Everything that happens to you is stored. Nothing disappears. At level one, your memory may be defective. But when you go to level two, your memory enlarges and goes with clarity into the past, sometimes even into the future. Okay? He uses as much of it as he needs as coin of knowledge and realized being and pays it out as coin of mental, vital, physical action. So, if you want plain words, what he has experienced in the past, he is using that knowledge, using his emotional experiences and using even his actions. Now he is using them, he is using them as a um, coin, he is purchasing his new capacities with the past, as he needs, as coin of knowledge and realized being. It's not only knowledge, it's also coin of emotion and also coin of action. Your action also starts becoming better and better. And realized being, and pays it out as coin of mental, vital and physical action in the commerce of the present. <laughs> in the commerce of the present. What is the commerce of the present? using the past for improvement in the future. In the normal commerce, you go to a shop and you give your money to the bank, or to the shop and get something. So this is the same image, the commerce of the past. You are using your past experience as money and purchasing your present and future, which creates in his view, a new wealth of the future. So, your past experience will always stand in good stead when you will benefit in the future. Ignorance is a utilization of the being set knowledge in such a way as to make it valuable for time experience and valid for time activity. So, now he <coughs> using a very interesting sentence. Ignorance. Ignorance is partial knowledge. So, whatever you are experiencing in the physical world, is being used for self-knowledge in such a way as to make it valuable for time experience. Okay, Whatever experience you have gained in the past, you are using it for experience and that experience is valid for time activity, valid for your, in the physical world, it is valid. The past is valid. So, in other words, he's saying that ignorance is a power. Ignorance is semi-knowledge. And semi-knowledge, whatever you are getting knowledge of the past, you are taking into the present. What we do not know is what we have not yet taken up, coined and used in our mental experience or have ceased to coin or use. So, what he's saying is, your bank contains a huge amount of wealth which you don't know. Okay. I remember once uh, I had a uh, an image, okay, of this fact, okay, uh, it comes in, uh, in images. So, I am the divine. I have got a huge amount of property, but I have lost my passbook. <laughs> okay, I don't know that I am the divine. 
So I have to get back. If I find my passport, I will be able to get the divine. I can end cash all that wealth which is there. And what is the passport? Yourself and your psychic being. Isn't it interesting? So this is the image is using. Very interesting. If you find your passport, you have access to your wealth in the bank. And what is that wealth in the bank? Your divine nature. That is there in you, but you don't know about it. You have, you have lost your passport. <laughs> you have lost your knowledge of the past. And the passport is your, if you experience the self, you have the <coughs> gate to your wealth. Psychic also is a gate to your wealth. Okay? Coined and used in the mental experience, or we have ceased to coin or use. We don't know what we are. We have stopped thinking of ourselves as a divine. Behind, behind means above and in this uh, subliminal, all is known. Everything, all knowledge is there in the background. And all is ready for use according to the will of the self in his dealings with time and space and causality. If you experience yourself, you realize that all the knowledge is there. But how much of it can you use in the physical world? It depends on the individual. If it's the ascetic, he doesn't want to have anything to do with the physical world. He is satisfied with the little bit of wealth that he has got. And he satisfied with that. But there are others who say, no, I want to be richer. So, so they are saying, I don't want to be richer. I want to be the richest. <laughs> I want to go to the highest level and get consciousness, force, power, ananda. I want everything. He is not satisfied with only a little bit of wealth. He wants entire wealth. One might almost say that our self as being is only a deeper eternal self in us, throwing itself out as an adventurer in time. You are an adventurer. Now he is giving another image. You are the divine and you have come into the forest of the physical world and you are exploring the forest. And there are difficulties, there are wild animals, there are uh, all sorts of dangers in the forest. But you are experience time. You are adventuring in time. And you are a gambler and a speculator. Who is a gambler and speculator? Who uses his past to speculate about the future. So that also you are doing in infinite possibilities. Limiting itself to the succession of moments so that it may have the all the surprise and delight of the adventure. The future is held back from you because it wants to give you the delight of discovery. Okay. When you discover that, oh, this is there in me. I didn't know that I, I had such a huge bank account. You are so happy. <laughs> so, the surprise, I'm just saying, surprise and delight of the adventure. Keeping back its self-knowledge and complete self-being so that it may win again what it seems to have lost. Reconquering all itself through the checkered joy and way of a non passion and seeking an adventure. Now, this is exactly the image in the Mahabharata as well as the Ramayana. <coughs> Ram is the divine, but he has been banished into the forest, Dandakaranya forest of the physical world. And now he has to win back his kingdom. And it takes him 14 years to do that. 14 years is symbolic of a lifetime. When you are imprisoned for a lifetime, it's only 14 years. Huh? It's only a way of saying. So 14 years in the Mahabharata as well as in the Ramayana is a way of saying that you are in the forest and you have to rediscover your kingdom. That's the image. So that's the adventure that you have to use. So memory, so I'm just finished talking about memory. And the next chapter is the, now he brings in the ego and self experience. How is memory and ego related? It's a very interesting discussion because your memory may disappear, but the ego does not. I'm seeing very, very clearly <laughs> at home, I have a person who is completely, memory has gone, okay? Dementia. But the ego has not gone. It's very interesting. So the relation between memory, ego and self. Next time we'll take that up. Okay? I hope you have enjoyed the images and the way he is expressing. It's a little deep, but you think about it and you will really enjoy what's in this.
Hello. Yes, tell me. You know, you told us the four levels of memory. The ah. first is the memory which relates to oneself, like anger, hatred, whatever. That's it. What yeah. was the second one? The memory of the physical world, not yourself. Okay, what oh, your memory of physical world? Yeah, outside yourself, even yourself. Your yesterday, I got angry. It's self-experience at the physical world. But somebody else got angry and had nothing to do with it. Is other experience. That's okay. what it means. Okay, that's what it means. And the third is that which is unconnected totally with you. Ah, yes. like the Modi speech. Exactly. Modi speech. And then okay. the memory of experience within yourself. That's right. Okay, that's right. got it. Yeah. Merci. Okay. Au revoir, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you.